we just wanted to do two different things. He wanted to make the record he always wanted to make. I wanted to make the record I wanted to make. And we said, well, let's just put them together. It's on the same level. Put them out at the same time. When we put these two, uh, you know, like mugshot kind of pictures. On the front exactly. Bar, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're still, we're still here. Uh. <laughs> Welcome back to Inner Sleeve on the Watch Mojo Podcast Network, the podcast taking a deep dive inside look at all things music. I'm your host, Cassius Morris, and it's a tremendous honor to be joined by not one, but two very special guests dialed in all the way from Los Angeles. California music icons Steve Lukather and Joseph Williams. Gentlemen, how's it going? Oh, I don't know if I'm an icon or not. <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing very well. That's high, yeah. high praise. You know, thank That's you one much. man's view. Well, thank, <laughs> well, thank you very much for saying No problem at all. So there's a lot going on with you guys. Specifically, there's two solo records that are being released on the same day, February 26th. Um, so I guess the first question naturally would be, what led you guys to collaborating sort of together on solo records? Well, the the original intent was not, you know, like a collaboration together for the records. Luke had his record uh, planned and he'd intended to go in the studio and, and make it early in 2020, actually long before we knew anything about the pandemic. Oh. Uh, uh, completely independent of mine. Uh, I had kind of been working on mine a little bit before 2020, but I made my record essentially in the summer. And it was when they were finished that we were talking about, like you know, the future of Toto touring and how we could put these together. And and if you and it, actually, if you put it on shuffle, it's kind of like a giant Toto record in a weird way. Mm -hmm. Almost, yeah. I mean, you, know, you got guys from the old, you know, different members from different eras on your band on your record, and I got Paige on mine. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know. So I mean, you know, I mean, it, there was a little Toto in it because. Page Joseph and I were involved in each other's record. Right. right, and and the and the and the, the fe featured more featured probably guitar player on my record is family to us. Yeah, you Mike Landau, I mean? one of my best friends since we were twelve, one of the greatest guitar players in the whole world. Exactly. So. A lot of the comments on some of the songs of, of mine online is is that you know a lot of people can't tell the difference when it's you and him. You well, there's right? a huge really. There's yeah. a huge difference. You, I definitely you, hear a difference. I mean, because there's two signature styles at play. Yeah, man. Mike's got he's instantly recognizable. And Mike got my own shit, whatever it is, you know. Um, yeah. We grew up together. I mean, you know, so, I mean, you know, we had a lot of the same influences and stuff. But I mean, I, I, but for, I but for, for my stuff in particular, since I was 23, I need both of them. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's great. No, because yeah. my, my Mike is one of my all-time favorites. He's a genius musician. It's, his work speaks for itself. But right, but his family since we were kids. Exactly. I mean, he's one of the hood neighborhood guys that we all in, in, in a in a way he's part of Toto too. Yeah, in, I mean, in a in, strange in, way. In a, in a right. Step satellite member in some sort of way we've exactly. all worked on our solo stuff together and done a million sessions and written tunes together and he's worked with joe and we worked on the same records together and all this other stuff so but other than that it's incredible well and we just did at the end of the day you know it's like well joe and i wanted to work together anyway because we knew the end of the old toto was coming and everybody knew that that was the last of that particular version and and luke's record was completely different too it was his other band had one of his other group of guys as a band yeah right. I mean, recording, I, yeah recording in a completely different way but he also had like dave and i participating so in some sense there was a little yeah no there was there was a little mm -hmm. tough, uh, i got some great you know but arrangement uh, and production ideas from these guys you know and joe helped me with my vocals and stuff like that and nice. uh, those guys are family too. Yeah, yeah everybody's family. I mean, it's a big family. family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where did you guys grow up, by the way? Well, in you know, LA. Right yeah. In LA. Yeah. yeah. Valley, Beverly Hills, we lived in Westwood. You know, we were just my, close, we're close enough to each other. I lived in England for a little while when I was a kid. My parents met, moved and worked there, but for the most part, I grew up right here in the valley. Okay, so you guys are all Valley Boys. Steve, you were going to say something there. No, I'm just saying we, it was pretty much, you know, all within driving range of each other, you know? Right. We, you know, so we hung out a lot. You know, I was in a band with his brother and I know his sister Jenny. And there was a lot of... Commingling. This commingling of... Family. Right. Commiserating, commingling. It was all one big happy group. That's that's yeah. interesting to me. So when you guys are all in the studio again after a number of years, I mean, it must bring bring back 
a level of nostalgia that's probably hard to capture elsewhere. Well, I did my record in eight days. Most of it was live in the studio, like right. everything but the vocals, you know, the solos right. and everything were done live. So I wanted to see if I could do that. Joe's went some most brilliant production on a record I've ever heard. So it's a two different things. But like he said, that was always part of the total thing. The difference of like one minute we'd be doing, you know, a, a pop tune or a, a ballad and then it would be a funky thing and then it would be something heavier prog or something like that, more progish. Right. Not heavy in the sense of like metal heavy like it is today. But I mean, we'd have crunchy guitars and with some more, inve- you know, adventuresome music, you know, right. and then we always danced in all these different different vocalists and everything like that. So our palette's a little wider than most. So yes, very different stuff. So we just wanted to do two different things. He wanted to make the record. He always wanted to make, I wanted to make the record I wanted to make. And we said, well, let's just put them together. It's on the same level, put them out at the same time. When we put these two, uh, you know, like mugshot kind of pictures. On the front exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 We're, still, we're still here. Uh, <laughs> It's, it almost reminds me of the Kiss solo albums when, when they dropped them on the same day with the similar covers. I mean, I, I love that that it's sort of a throwback because that's an era that's before I mine. On one, I actually play it on Peter Chris's record. On that. We we weren't oh, wow. thinking about that intentionally, but but it might but it might as well be an homage to that because we we love those guys. Yeah, too. man. I mean, you know, yeah. There's nothing but love. I mean, we're all in this business together. You know, different styles of music, but you know, the game is the same. We all yes. want successful and you know make money doing what we love doing and entertain people that's what it is that's the name of the game it's it's very important and joe your your record was mostly like entirely self-produced is that correct yes for the most part except for two songs uh, produced by jay greska but yes everything else was me why was that important for you this time around and, and is that something that you typically like to take on um well for for my solo stuff it's usually the case Right. Um, in the past, you know, Jay Gruska actually was, you know, a pr- pr- producer of my first solo album, Luke played on it. Um, but you know, over the years, especially recently, and also my time as a film composer, I guess I just acquired st- more skills as a producer and also more s- skills as, a, you know, with as an engineer, really. So uh, with uh, just uh, with the time passing and then also working on the uh, last two Toto projects, Toto 14 and the 40 Trips Around the Sun project. I just my skills just got better, and I thought that yeah, for, for this truly. for this time around, I would just give it a shot. You know, take doing it myself. Right, and uh, Steve, you actually said that this was some of the best production you've heard in quite a while. Well, I mean, I, I Joe's record is just stunning. You, you know, I mean, you've heard it, you've heard it, then you know what I mean. It just sonically, yeah. it's the arrangements are just so deep. It's just deep record. I mean, I just think because I'm so proud of it because I'm so I'm a fan as well as he's my buddy. But you know, hundred percent. I mean, we have different ways of going about and, getting and, our music out. And I all. feel exactly the same way about his record. I, you know, I think you know, brilliantly performed and executed in the way it was and everything. And my, my being a my small part of it was was a you know an oh, honor, no, honor. And the musicians he had playing at you know in the studio. Oh, the cats were great. Were, are absolutely you know the be- very very best you can you can have so many yeah T- two incredible records i mean i was you know blown away when i when i got the chance to put them both on and i know everybody's going to love it when it gets to come out um so steve you mentioned the challenge of recording everything live in you know a week eight days talk to me about why that was important for you this time around well first of all, i wanted to see if i could do it Especially it was a challenge time. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not exactly you know writing a new song you know, with Miley Cyrus to do being on the top. <laughs> of the radio. I'm trying. This was a record that I made for myself, more vanity record or whatever you want to call it. So I'm, I'm not shooting for a hit record. I'm shooting for an artistic statement. And the statement I wanted to make is, let's try and make a record like they did in 1972 in 2020, where you play everything live and you overdub the vocals. And yeah. that's what we did, song a day, and then you know, and then we mixed the record after that. So I wanted to do it. Can we do this? Everybody live. You can't fix anything. It's not click tracks. It's not on the Pro Tools grid and all that stuff. Really old school way of doing it. No rehearsals, no demos. Just here's the chart. Let's run it once. And take two was the whole record. And I overdubbed a couple little bits and pieces the same day. If I heard a double guitar part or acoustic or you did a few background vocals or whatever. But then it was right. really tried to keep it a song a day. And mm-hmm. 
And that's what we did. And I was really proud of the fact that of the band, the incredible band I had, Greg Bissonette, Jurgen Carlson, David Page, Jeff Babco, John Pierce, and Joe. Uh, and Ringo, and you know, yes, you know, Ringo playing on a track that Paige, me and Joe wrote for his birthday. Yeah, you know, incredible. Uh, Talk to me about the Ringo collaboration. Well, he's a dear friend of mine, and I've been to yeah. the band for nine years now. Yeah, uh, we were supposed to be touring, obviously, and so are we, but we're all in this COVID nightmare together. But that's uh, it. The only other, you know, he, he, I, we wrote the song for his birthday. It was supposed to be a birthday gift because we we're gonna have a big party for his 80th birthday, you know. So everybody submitted these things. Well, it didn't really get put on the video channel, right? Right. Mm. And, and he played on it and everything like that. So it's like we put it out as a happy summer thing, just to try to. It's not really like anything on the rest of the record. It's yeah. A, but it's a fun thing that we did as an homage to the Beatles and Tom Petty and all the you know the like the ELO and exactly. all the stuff that we loved from that era. Yeah. It's an homage to that, and he really dug it. So I'm, I put it on my record. I mean, it's part of me too. That part is style, part of our style. We have strong Beatles connections and love. That's why I started playing music. You know? Yes, Joe, you, you cite the song "If I Fell" by the Beatles as one of the specific songs that really taught you about the power of harmonies and and arranging vocals. Can you talk to me about that memory a bit? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, rem first of all, just remember as a kid hearing the tone of those, of John and Paul's voices together, which was just remarkable. I obviously couldn't process it or put it into words, but obviously just like everybody else, the, the t their tones together was just, were so great. Yeah. And also, um, no as Luke actually pointed out to me, it's probably mostly the two of them, the way they wrote together that, that came up with harmonies like like that, uh, where where one guy was sort of doing the melody and the other guy was dancing around a cup, you know, the 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 first the first and third harmonies. So right. second and third harmonies. And then all of a sudden they go into unison and then, perfectly, and then they're you know? in perfect <laughs> unison. It's it's it's, it's just magical. It's, it's just a it's vocal arrangement that is absolutely perfectly arranged for that for the composition. And and I don't it, and as a, first of all as a kid I just kind of just sort of hit home for me. The harmonies are just so beautiful. And and the harmony arrangement are just like it's a perfect example of a perfect arrangement for that song, uh, for, to me. And then you throw on top of that the brilliance of those two men and their tone yeah, together. Exactly. And you know it's it, to me that's like one of the most. They're still the greatest band in the world. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> People it, may argue with me, but it, if you had to be there, we were there with from the start. Yeah, vo vocally, right. vocally for me in every way, it's just one of my favorite songs. Me too. Well, what's you guys' favorite Beatles record? Can you pick one respectively each? Impossible. It's kind of impossible, but like for, for me, if I could only have one for the rest of my life, I, it would probably probably be Abby. Road just because mm -hmm. I, I when I was a kid I listened to that thing over and over and over again, and it it was very calming and I and I just I love the way the the second side flowed with with just you know as a huge medley and you know if I yeah. would if I had to pick one it would be that one but it's it's impossible because I would also have to have Rubber Soul the White Album uh, and, and, and Charged and Pepper yeah. and all the rest. <laughs> I mean, for me, if I had to pick one, it would have to be the first album because that's the one that got me. Right, right. I wore that fucker out until I figured out, like, I want to play guitar like George Harrison, you know what I mean? And I just, that was the on switch to my life. So, I mean, it's not maybe the, the best Beatle album in terms of their greatest work, but it certainly... It was the most it, important it, one. It was, it was the yeah. most important because it opened the door yeah. to the world of the who and what they were. And so that sticks with me, you know? Yeah, the, the yes. answer is... Favorite Beatle album is all of them. Yeah, all of them. Let's put them all on like, one track. Like they made a bad album, you know. Yeah. No, definitely never did. And I think it's interesting that you mentioned the first record because I heard it mentioned that you know as their career went on, they weren't you know being really influenced by much of anyone. But that first record is a culmination of their influences, which I think is right. very interesting. I mean, it was just, but that was the first one that took America by storm. So I mean, there was a certain energy to that music if you were the young enough. And you were there. If you look back at it now, it seems tame and rather, you know, you, you know that's not hard yeah, but, to play. But, but yeah, but but but, it, but it's also brilliant again. Like yeah, it's, but it's, it's also um, brilliant again because it's real. Yeah, exactly. And these guys made that. that was all of them playing and singing at the same time. It's like, okay, man, that's what the Beatles sound like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nowadays, it's a laptop and a celebrity. You know what I mean? You don't right. know what you're getting. You know. And you don't know if it's authentic or if it's corrected by the computer. Well, exactly. 
I, I'll it's give true. you 99.9 odds that it's the computer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Sadly, nowadays, I mean, talking. Yeah, talking about the 70s sort of process of keeping it real and keeping it live, how do you find incorporating the new technology into that process? Is it easier or is it more difficult? It's the same. We just use it as a, as a tape machine. I mean, you're working in the mm -hmm. digital realm and the way they have it sonically now is so it's fantastic. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's my, easier to work on that. I'm a, I am a right. fan of technology and its progress because um, of the years I spent as a composer in TV and, and stuff, because most of the work that I did was, was computer based. And, it, right. and it, as Macs were getting better and better and all, and, and all of that, all, all the Mac pros. And so, uh, and also sample libraries and all of that and doing a lot of TV, you're, you're, you're limited sometimes to some of those libraries as opposed to being able to have an orchestra or something because they, there's mm. just, isn't, isn't the budget. Right. So, uh, so for me, uh, learning how to make a, 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 as seamless a mix as you can between the real musicians and the the, the synths or sampled stuff mm -hmm. to me is a is a kind of an art unto itself, which it which I enjoy yeah. doing. Absolutely. That's incredible. I mean, and that makes sense talking about your background in film. And I mean, you've worked on tons of films. Correct me if I'm wrong. Lion King, Goonies. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, can you talk to me, me about some of your favorite compositions or standout memories from the film days? Well, the, in those early films, you know, I was I was a I was basically a con contracted songwriter for, for a couple of different publishing companies. In those days, you know, they actually had rooms where writers could still actually come and write songs. I was at I had a, a publishing deal at Fox with, when uh, Hornsby did, and like we had a couple of assignments to go into one of the rooms and start right. you know, writing a couple of songs, that kind of thing. So hmm. the, during that, with a lot of the things like go Goonies and stuff, those tune, tunes were written during that era. And, right. and uh, when I when I would write when I would do demos for my songs, the, the the publishers would always say it would be it's hard for for me to get artists to cover these because they, the artists always say that I should just be the artist that does them. The demos mm. always sounded, sounded that way. So that was how <laughs> some of those songs made it into those films with me being the singer on them. Is they interesting? Just used, we just used my demos. We just prop, you know fixed up the demos and. I, I ended up in those films. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff I did, like in the Star Wars films, I ain't gonna lie, is is my father, you know, giving me a little bit of work, okay, know, to do. But but right. one thing one thing I can tell you about my dad is that regardless of who it is, family or not, if you can't do the job, he does not hire you. It's not so, going to make the cut, right? Yeah, exactly. I can tell you as because I have a son in the music business. If anything, you might be a little harder on your kid. Right. You know, I've heard that. that. But that's not, are you sure? My mm -hmm. son's an incredible talent. He's got his great new band, Lavara, that's, you know, just got a record coming out. Nice. And, you know, and he's and he's been doing this for 20 years, and now he's finally starting to get some action. He's had a little bit of moderate success, but, um, but the, you know, but he's like, it's not easier just because he's my kid. If anything, it's harder. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Uh, the, the, the one only really sort of serious comp composition that I did, uh, the Star Wars stuff, what he, you know, he, I went up and did Ewok voices and wrote some English lyrics for some of those songs that were translated into alien languages. Oh, cool. But like, but I was able to do a couple of, of like actual cues in AI and also in like minority report and a couple of those things. Those were the last pieces that I did, did for him. And, but most of the work that I did was in TV was in, you know, television series, like over, you know, 17 different series over a period of like 15 years. And what's your relationship like with that now, with film work? Is there anything going on still? There, not since I came back to Toto and started touring again in, you know, 09 and 10, you know, that that pretty much that, like, those two, between those two years, thinking about it, talking about it, going back out eventually to make money from, from Mike and stuff, I just thought, you know what, this is really what I would rather be doing. So I haven't, yes. I haven't, I haven't been doing anything. Not that I wouldn't be open to it, I just haven't gotten into it. Hey, there's been a lot going on. What was it like for you guys when you first got back together in that sort of 09, 2010 era? I mean, when you first... Well, I mean, it felt great. I mean, to be back together again, playing for the cause that it was, which was to help our brother Mike, who was struggling with ALS. You know, yeah. Sadly, we lost him. Right. 
Um, and that was the original intention, and it was a lot of fun and very successful. And we said, do you want to do it again? And it just sort of became a thing. And then the Africa thing went crazy, and then our popularity went to the roof, and we were just getting crazy offers, and a lot of great things were happening. We were just trying to take advantage of it and got to be a little bit too much for some people. And there were some other bad things behind the scenes, you know, some uh, lawsuits and stuff, which I'm not really going to talk about at all. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, so we had to take a sudden relook at the whole thing. And uh, David Page is standing with Joseph and I in the sense of he wants us to carry on as Toto. And he was the one that really said, come on, man. And he comes down to rehearsals and still works with the band. He just medically can't get on it. To yeah. a bus or a plane. Yeah, I mean, the main point is, is that in that ten-year period, there was a, there was a, there was such a big build back for yeah. the band that, like, when we stopped in 2019, you know, Luke and I looked at each other and said, when, you know, when we, when we can, we, we're not done. We want to come back out and play. That's yeah. right. That's that's basically yeah. what it is. And other guys are like, I never want to be on the road ever again in my life. Yeah. And some people are like, just didn't get along. Yeah. Some was, some people mm-hmm. can't the road anymore and some people don't want to go yeah there the was a little rub with a few people and uh, one in particular that was just it just became hard to be a part of it's and, and again and again it's it's a family so it's like you know years and years of a, of a relationship and stuff and you know they from time to time they go wrong but you know yeah it's all family sometimes you got to shake it up sometimes but we want to keep playing i mean no it's not total from 1978 79 it's not total 1983 it's not total 1990 or 2000 you know it's like 2022 it's 21 20, 22 exactly. and then uh, we're the only two guys that still want to do it to still have it's, it's, I've, I've been in all 15 incarnations so whatever right you know? Band has changed a lot over the years. And it's the way I tell people. It's the latest Toto touring entity. Right. It, it just continues to evolve in different forms. The music is actually the band more than a guy. Right. When you, when really great musicians play that music, it has except, a lot. Except you have to have you. Well, I mean, you argue, <laughs> that's arguable. Yeah. I think there's a few people who like to have me out in the backyard and shoot my fucking head off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it after the love is gone, you know? <laughs> After the ah. love is gone, that's it, right? Yeah, written by my dear friend Jay Graydon, David Foster, and Bill Champ. Right. The last question I maybe wanted to get for you was: uh, to what do you attribute some of the staying power of some of you guys' biggest hits, such as Africa, et cetera? I'm sure you guys have definitely covered this, but uh, I mean, you know, looking back at the staying power, does it shock you? Uh, no, we have naked pictures of the right people. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. So this it's a blackmail situation. No, I all pay all of exactly. bullshit. <laughs> No, for all these years. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know what, man? We're fortunate as fuck. We're very grateful. Thank you, know, you all. The, Sorry about my dirty mouth. You know, I can't the, the thing is, is okay. that who knows what makes a, a song, you know, uh, hit home with people in their bones. I mean, who knows what that is? When it happens, it, it happens. It's like it's like almost like yeah. a spiritual thing. Yeah. And David Page from our, from the from our band. It's one of those guys, you know, my dad's one of them the, who write who who they're they are people who have been able to write multiple songs like that, that get in your yeah. bones. Yeah, I mean, you know, Dave writes the music, man. I mean, he's the one that, uh, you know, he's the grand booba, big boss. And him and Jeff started the whole thing, you know, and I was lucky enough to be asked to be part of it. And then, you know, as time went on, when we lost Jeff and then we lost Mike, I mean, it just sort of. I moved up to be more of Dave's partner in this because Jeff wasn't there to be that anymore. So, right. I always believed in this band. I never wanted to give it up, even when times were real tough and there were some real tough times. Barely keeping the wheels on the bus, you know. So to get the have it all come back again was really sweet, you know, and I was really enjoying the success. And we, we can pick up where we left off when we come back because everybody knows the story now and the There'll be some though people will be able to see the band again because there'll be a live stream DVD coming out due to popular demand. So they'll be able to see that, even though we only had 10 days to do it. And you know, I was so worried about everybody else. I was paying attention to what I was playing, but everybody else was great. <laughs> no, 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 to make a disclaimer. I, think, I always I make a disclaimer. It, I think it came out great. I um, mean, the, the piece itself is raw, but it's great. Right. It's, it shows and plus there's a whole new interview thing in it that explains everything. Pages in it. Nice, um, and I'm really going to tell the story, so people are going to get why we're doing this again, and what the deal is, and what the intentions were. And 
Amazing. There's no bad vibe. There's no, we're not, it's not about throwing mud at anybody. We're not doing that. I just love everybody. I'm sorry that it ended the way it did, but it did, you know? That's the way um, it happens sometimes. Well, listen, I, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And keep making the incredible music. I'll be listening. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.